Hey everybody, Damon at Black Warrior Lures. We're getting a new boat trailer. I, I just can't. It's a fairly lightweight boat, just a 12 foot John boat, but it's just too heavy, too awkward for my back. So we're finally going to get a trailer. Got the uh, Harbor Freight boat trailer. It's great for little boats like this. And let's go on over here and let me show you the kit that it comes in. Okay, so here we have it. This is the trailer. It comes in a kit, everything bolts up. Um, boxes here and I'll just be forewarned your boxes will come a little tattered uh, they didn't come this badly they were still fairly well put together it's just that I it came in in the afternoon I didn't have time to deal with it so I moved it inside the house and they sort of ripped apart then but don't worry it'll um, the back boxes come tattered but it seems like everything is intact um, safety chain nuts bolts Oh, wow, look at that. That's the, the thingy for the, you know, the thingy. <laughs> oh, the bunks. The things for the bunks and probably some accessory there or another. Nice. This is turning out to be a nice little kit. A nice little piece of kit, as they would say. My guess is these are the lights and wiring. Yep. Lights, wiring, wow, look at that, man. It even has like yellow lights, turning signals. Huh. That there. Oh, here's the paperwork. Registrations, instructions, important. So it does come with a certificate of origin. So you want to take that, save it. Some states you have to register the boat trailer with the Department of Transportation or whatever, the motor vehicles, whatever. But in Alabama, you don't. It's just part of the boat, and they don't really do all that. So it's a lot simpler. But you have it if you need it, and that's really nice. It looks like these bearings have been already pre-packed pretty well, so that's nice. That's a nice thing to see. I can't tell you the number of times that they ship stuff like this out and they don't even grease the dang on bearings, but this is this is turning out to be a nice little kit here. Tubeless tire, 60 pounds per square inch. Nice. Axles. Interesting. There's a spindle. And it's greased up as well. Man, this is nice. This is nice, folks. Spindle, good condition. Alright. Yeah. That looks to be the last of it, so. See the major components, you got your bunks, we got our main supports, struts, tires, hubs, wheels, fender wells, and all that good stuff. Now it's time to get to work. Yeah, so the first step is just to sort of lay it out as in the diagram. Sometimes with these instructions, it's easier just to look at the picture than it is to follow the instructions. To me, the instructions are clear. I've heard a lot of reviews of people saying that they didn't think the instructions were very clear, but I just think that ultimately, um, you know, to me it's easy, but, uh, but some people may not find it that way. It may be good to get some wood blocks or something to put it up and get it off the ground and make it a little easier. That's maybe what we're going to Plate above, plate below. It's kind of neat. OK. 
kind of hard to align them, but the great thing about it is these are slightly elongated, so nice little, so there's adjustments to be made. We're going to have to lift this one up some. Continuing along, just about got the entire superstructure, I guess you want to call it, done. We're putting some rollers on. Very simple. Important thing you want to do when, when, whenever you're doing something like this is uh, I have to go get the other wrench, but uh, is you want to uh, put all the bolts in first, then tighten them. Don't be tightening them one at a time. It's no good. So let's go put this one other one in and uh, tighten these down. Then we'll be ready to turn this sucker upside down and put the wheels on. It doesn't say so in the instructions, but the big bolts here, you're going to need a 17 millimeter bolt uh, socket, and then the rest of it's 9 16 So it's kind of, you know, half metric, half uh, uh, imperial standard units, or whatever you want to call them. That's a little weird, but uh, just a quick note, something that I found. Not much of a surprise, you know, it just doesn't really... But... Just a quick heads up. Actually, what am I doing? Just <laughs> make it simpler. It's simpler to use the ratchet, but there we go. To get the proper spacing on the bunks, especially on a simple little John boat, what you want to do is look at where you want the bunks to be. Do you want the bunks to be between here, between your runners, or on the outside? I want my runners to be sort of on the outside. And so what you do is just take your tape measure and just run it here. And, you, and it's going to be about 22 inches here. Now remember, 22 inches, half of 22 is 11, so you put the 11 dead there in the middle. And right here is where you can see. It gives us 24 inches of clearance, so that's good. If we had gone in one more, it would have been too narrow. So we went out one notch more, and that gave us 24, so there's plenty of clearance there. It'll fit on the outside. The bunks will fit on the outside of the runners. Make it a little bit more secure when positioning it and running it about, running the boat on there. That way you know it's on there right. The one thing about the instructions is never mind the size. The instructions say that this bolt is a 3 16th inch bolt. But in actuality, it's a 7 8 inch bolt. Right? And this is more like a... Uh, I forget what exactly what it was, but it... Uh, it's a pretty big bolt, so don't just go by the specific measurements. Just look at it by your eye. If the whole, you know, unit is have to be supported by this, this is going to be a much thicker bolt, and you can just see it. So as long as you have a good mechanic's eye, then you know it's not the instructions are not really that bad. I don't believe it's obviously translated and you know from you know Taiwan or from Chinese to you know it's made in Taiwan, but you know. It's obviously lost in translation, that kind of thing, but it's not that bad. And when you just look at the picture and just take your time and go, then it'll be fine. Axle fits right on top of that right there. Same thing on this other side here. And there we go. This will be faster with a ratchet, but everything's bolting on up actually quite nicely. It's actually a pretty decent little design. Progress. I didn't video all that because this process here, getting all this on here, was very frustrating. Not very frustrating, it was just I'd forgotten to put the cotter pan, I had to take it all apart and stuff. So there's a couple of details with the instructions with this. Make sure you have things facing the right way. 
make sure you put that three quarter inch big oh it's not three quarters inch it's about that big a washer in there make sure you put that cotter pan in there and again once now that I see how it works it's I can easily do maintenance on it uh, if you need to quick tip if you need to remove this just like you take a hammer and tap it in start tapping it on this outside edge to just wedge it back out and that's how you get that off if you ever need to take it off again that's the only way I found to do it and it works pretty well so far I'm still satisfied I think it's a really well thought out little design and so now we're ready to turn this thing over and uh, start working on the tongue and once we get the tongue and all that done then we'll run the lights and we may just wait to run the lights on um, uh, tomorrow. One side of this bunk is is longer than the other. You want to make sure, don't have it set where it falls down that way, but for it falls down backward because that will be a safety hazard. It'll mess up the trailer that way. Uh, if you have it falling down backward, it'll make the boat a lot easier here. And then it'll rest on that roller there and then we'll adjust that roller up there right and that'll uh, help it as well and so just another quick tip in putting this thing together make sure that the bunks fall down backward these lights are something else they're big they already have the leads coming out of them I mean I bought you know lights before you had to punch a hole in it and it just didn't work these already have the leads coming out they've got gaskets here these little foam gaskets help waterproof it you know, really well thought out even down to the lights that go under the trailer so that's what we're gonna do right now and it's already you know it's color coded you know yellow is for the left side green is for the right side but even if you say you're colorblind it says left hand side that's the top and that goes to the road side okay and uh, this is the st you know and so there you go it's all you got to do is just follow that and you'll know even if you're colorblind it'll it'll work so another thing that's uh, just great about this uh, design it mounts right on up Again, just kind of get them both on there and then tighten them up later. Same thing for the other side. Now the directions say you know they want you running the wires through the, the trailer itself. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to run it on top and just put zip ties on it like I did with my other trailer. I, I don't really want to have to deal with, you know, if you're going to run the wires through this, I would recommend before you build the trailer, before you put it together, run the wires through this uh, outer uh, tubing here and then be done with it okay because otherwise it's just going to be frustrating I've got plenty of zip ties for my boat building days and that's what I'm going to do to hold them on there and it'll work just fine Direction. See that holds. We just come all along here, you know, zip ties it, and um, like I say, I had a bunch of these from boat building, from my old boat building days. And they don't have to be all perfect. And so here what we're going to do is splice um, we're going to have to splice this uh, unit in. So we may have to back this back out probably turn that upside down and then we're going to splice in that unit. But uh, for right now as you can see you'll just run it all along here all the way up to there and uh, it'll be good to go. 
All right, it's finished, man. I'm ready to take it out on a road test. Uh, best thing to do is, as you can see how I have the lights just zip tied on. A lot easier. I don't feel like running it through the tubes, but main thing is you're going to have some excess up there, which we'll manage later. And this tongue here, this uh, unit there that you see sticking up, that's loose. I'm not going to worry about tightening it up until I get the boat off the truck. Once we load it off, we'll know exactly how far to place it and how high to place it. But for now, this thing's ready to take on the road. So we're going to hook around up to the truck. And um, I'll let you know when I get back. Works well, man. I didn't take the, you know, video out in the road. I didn't feel like it, but works well. Lights work. Blinkers work. Only thing I could see that needs to be done is that this unit here, this bolt here. See how that's loose? Didn't tighten that up. Need to go ahead and tighten up these lights. And the only thing I don't like is you see how low that is to the ground right there. I don't think that's a problem out there on the road and stuff. But just be mindful when you're backing your trailer back in the boat dock that could be really low to the ground. The only other option is to raise it up higher, but I don't want to raise it up that high. Uh, again, it just kind of makes my point that these bunks are just way too short for the application. But if it's down like that, that boat will just run straight on there and that'll help run, make it easy loading and unloading. I can see the, 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 the thinking behind the design is pretty well. Uh, axle runs, spindle runs, you know, didn't hear any shredded bearings or anything like that, so I got all that installed correctly. And uh, there you go. There's the Harbor Freight. Um, boat trailer. If you've got a 9, if you've got an 8, 10, 12 foot John boat, this is a serious trailer to look at. Uh, I may run into the house here and show you how you can get the lowest price on it. But in, in reality, if you just type in Harbor Freight coupon, you get a coupon code, you'll get your, I got a coupon code that was 25% off and got the whole trailer for $337. That's U.S. And uh, so the only thing I got to do now is tighten up that boat back there. Finally, get the boat loaded off the truck here onto the trailer. Make sure you how I do that and then adjust this to the right height and adjust this to the right distance. Other than that, the trailer's done. It's finished. Probably end up going fishing tomorrow. If not, you know, sometime after work maybe. Right now, I'm going to take a break, go in the house, get a peanut butter sandwich, and uh, be happy. <laughs> Damon at Black Warrior Lures, check this trailer out.